There's a lot going on with the company that we're talking about today. They're a California-based chip manufacturer, and they are about to lay off hundreds of people. But it didn't begin there, no. Last year, they laid off about 1,200 of their employees. But that's not where it ends. This company is on a real roller coaster because there's speculation that they may be interested in buying Intel. So a lot going on with this company. There's a few articles I have to go over with you today. So let's dive in. The company in question today is Qualcomm. And I have a couple of articles, like I said, and all the articles I reference are listed down in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. I'm just gonna go over the highlights and how it pertains to what we're talking about today. Our first article I found on techcrunch.com and the headline is, chip maker Qualcomm lays off hundreds of workers in San Diego. And the article goes on to say, Qualcomm, which makes chips for smartphones, said it will lay off 226 workers in San Diego later this year, according to a California warn notice published this week. The layoffs, which were first reported by the San Diego Union Tribune, will take effect the week of November 12th. So it's kind of good news, bad news. The bad news is that companies are laying off people, what it feels like when you're in the job market, at a record pace. But the good news is if a company is big enough, then they have to file a warn notice, which essentially gives you a warning about a potential layoff to come. Now you might not know the department, you might not know if it actually will affect you, but at least if you're looking and you're paying attention, you'll be able to see if your, if your organization is planning to lay off people and then you can act accordingly. This information is just off the presses in the past few days, right before recording this. So it's September and they're talking about they're doing layoffs in November. So you have a little bit of a heads up to at least come up with a plan B for your employment. The article goes on to say that the layoffs affect employees at 16 facilities across San Diego, including the company's headquarters, which has a cybersecurity presence. It's unclear if the cybersecurity team is affected, and a Qualcomm spokesperson declined to say when asked by TechCrunch. In a statement, Qualcomm spokesperson Kristen Stiles said, Our leading technology and product portfolio has positioned us to execute on a diversification strategy. As part of a normal course of business, we prioritize and align our investments, resources, and talent to ensure we are optimally positioned to take advantage of the unprecedented diversification opportunities in front of us. And you gotta give it to these CEOs and these spokespersons. Like, they are so good with words. They definitely have the gift of gab, the gift of spin. I mean, there's never any bad news if you ask a CEO. It's not layoffs, it's <laughs> taking advantage of unprecedented diversification opportunities. It's always an opportunity for the corporation, but a sad reality and potentially life-altering blow for the employees. But forget them. Who cares about the employees who got you there? Let's just make all that money. The decision by Qualcomm to lay off hundreds of employees comes less than a year after the chip maker let go of more than 1,250 workers, which we'll talk about here in a minute. During 2023, Qualcomm recorded $35.8 billion in annual revenue, and its chief executive, Cristiano Aman, took home $23.5 million in total executive compensation. And you can try your hardest in the comments down below, but you're not going to convince me that executives should be getting paid that kind of money while they're laying off the hardworking employees of the organization. I mean, it's one thing if these organizations allowed employees to have a say, make decisions, no. They literally mostly are just order takers. Like, what do you want us to do? Okay, we'll do that. Well, have you thought about, no. The, we're not paying you to think, we're paying you to do. So execute our strategy which ultimately will lead to your demise but that's okay because you need to keep your mouth shut and do what you're told all while the ceo has no repercussions for these things i mean worst case scenario for one of these ceos is they get a golden parachute which means that they get an amazing multi-million dollar buyout and they'll probably land another job i mean there's no punishment 
for leading a company into the ground. And even if you think the CEO did do a good job, I mean, there has to be, the stars have to be aligned for an employee to be able to get a buyout, to get a severance package, to get any sort of relief after losing their job. And to lose your job into the 2024 job market, I mean, that really should be a crime. And since the other article brought up what Qualcomm did in 2023, let's get some more information for those who may be new to what's going on with this organization. So I have an article from CNN Business, and the headline is Chipmaker Qualcomm to lay off over 1,200 California workers. And this article was published on October 12th of 2023. And it says that Qualcomm, one of the largest microchip manufacturers globally, is scaling back its workforce. So we talk about this all the time, unfortunately. You got to be able to read the writing on the wall. If your company issues a warn notice, then that's great. You need to take that seriously and start preparing a plan B like I talked about earlier. But in addition to that, just look at the layoffs. And I'm not saying that you're automatically magically going to get a new wonderful opportunity. But if you see that your company has done a layoff and somehow miraculously you survived, you need to take that as a sign to get to a better opportunity if possible at all. And then when that happens, you need to go try to find a new job because it's only going to be six months, maybe a year until another round of layoffs. These layoffs do not magically solve all of the issues of the company. It does not mean that they've turned things around. It does not mean that they're going to go on a hiring spree now that, as they would claim, they let go of the dead weight, they let go of the underperformers. No. It's just one part of a mini part stage to continue to eliminate as many workers as possible, especially American workers. The article goes on to say that the San Diego, California-based company will be laying off 1,258 rolls in California. Now this is last year, so this is what they did in uh, 2023. According to a filing with the California Employment Dep Development Department, impacted employees include those based out of San Diego and Santa Clara in multiple roles, from engineers to legal counsel to human resources with job reductions coming around December 13th. They announced a little bit earlier than they had the actual layoffs around December 13th, and now we're at September of 2024, and we're going through this again. And yes, it's quote unquote only 200 and something employees, but to me, <laughs> anytime more than like one person lose their job, that is a bad thing. I mean, this is people's livelihood. This is how people support their family, put food on their kids' tables. I mean, <laughs> 200 people losing their job from one company at one time is nothing to, to just pass over. I think it's something that we definitely need to talk about. Back to the article from last year. So in August of last year, in the call with analysts, the chief financial officer warned that the company would be taking proactive measures to cut costs as the company faces shrinking revenue. Given our commitment to operating discipline, we will proactively implement additional cost actions, they said. Until we see sustained signs of improving fundamentals, our operating framework does not assume an immediate recovery. Now let's get back into the time machine and take us back to 2024 from 2023. So this article is from Reuters. And as I said, it's not just a matter of a company that is laying off hundreds that laid off about 1,200 people previously. No. This is a company that is trying to make moves. I guess they really are trying to diversify because there's speculation. And like I said, this is speculation station. This is not official or anything like that. But speculation that they could be interested in buying out Intel. Is this going to be allowed? Is this going to be approved? Can we have one chip maker buying another chip maker? Let's read this article from Reuters. The headline is, Qualcomm's potential Intel buyout could raise antitrust foundry concerns. And this is from September 23rd of this year. And it says, a potential deal to buy Intel could accelerate Qualcomm's diversification, but will burden the smartphone chip maker with a loss-making semiconductor manufacturing unit that it may struggle to turn around or sell, the analyst said. A buyout will also face tough antitrust scrutiny globally, as it would unite two crucial chip firms in what would be the sector's biggest ever deal, creating a behemoth with a strong share of the smartphone, 
personal computer, and server markets. Shares of Intel rose nearly 3% on Monday after media reports late on Friday about Qualcomm's early stage approach for the struggling chip maker. Qualcomm shares went down 1.8%. The rumored deal between Qualcomm and Intel is intriguing on many levels and from a pure product perspective makes a certain degree of sense as they have a number of complementary product lines, said the tech analysis research founder. The reality of it actually occurring, however, is very low. Plus, it is unlikely that Qualcomm would want all of Intel and trying to break apart the product business from the foundry business right now would just not be possible. Considering Qualcomm had around $7.77 billion in cash and cash equivalents as of June 23rd, analysts expect the deal will mostly be funded through stock and be highly diluted for Qualcomm's investors, likely raising some apprehension. Qualcomm, which also supplies to Apple, has quickened its efforts to expand beyond its mainstay smartphone business with chips for industries including automotive and PCs under CEO Cristiano Amon but it still remains overtly reliant on the mobile market, which has struggled in recent years due to the post-pandemic demand slump. Amon is personally involved in the Intel negotiations and has been examining various options for a deal for the company, sources told Reuters. This is not the first time Qualcomm is pursuing a large acquisition. It had offered to buy rival NXP semiconductors for $44 billion in 2016, but abandoned the bid two years later after failing to secure a nod from Chinese regulators. And then there's a section called Foundry Conundrum. While Intel designs and manufactures its chips that power personal computers and data centers, Qualcomm has never operated a chip factory. It uses contract manufacturers such as TSMC and designs and other technology supplied by Arm Holdings. Qualcomm lacks the experience needed to ramp up Intel's fledgling foundry business, which recently named Amazon.com as its first major customer, according to analysts. We do not know why Qualcomm would be a better owner for those assets, said someone from Bernstein. We do not really see a scenario without them either. We do not think anyone else would really want to run them and believe scrapping them is unlikely to be politically viable. Intel's foundry business is seen as crucial to Washington's goal of growing domestic chip manufacturing. The company has secured about $19.5 billion in federal grants and loans under the CHIPS Act to build and expand factories across four U.S. states. Some analysts said that Intel will prefer outside investments instead of a sale, pointing to a recent move to make a foundry business more independent. Bloomberg News reported over the weekend that Apollo Global Management, already a partner in Intel's Ireland facility, has offered an investment of as much as $5 billion in the company. Qualcomm could also decide to buy parts of Intel's business instead of the entire company. Reuters had reported earlier this month that it had particular interest in Intel's PC design unit. So even if Qualcomm does not decide to purchase part or all of Intel, it's still interesting, <laughs> right? So you really don't know what's going on with a company because you have a company that has laid off 1,200 people and now they're going to be laying off a couple hundred more. And then you could think to yourself, oh, this company's struggling. And then they're going to go buy another name brand chip manufacturer, potentially. So it's really hard to read some of these tea leaves about what these organizations are doing. So that's all the latest news as far as what's going on with Qualcomm. Let me know if you have any personal experience working there, working with them, and what are your thoughts on the organization as a whole. Talk to you later.